Welcome to Happy Mind Travel TV and accompanying video channel of the Happy Mind Travel podcast, where I share with you some psychological based practices or special exercises regularly, helping you gain mental strength. So, without further ado, let's get into our topic today. I'm going to introduce you an app that's called the Sam app that deals with our anxiety. It's called the Self Help Anxiety Management app. It's free, and you can find it both on Android and iOS device. Anxiety could be a huge part of our lives if we focus too much on the unexpected side of our future. We worry about a lot of things every day, from our daily lives to our relationships, to money, to our kids—all kinds of things that we just can't toss out of our minds. And most likely, we couldn't control all those things. So, this app is gonna help you learn how to manage your emotions. It's an emotion managing app, and you could learn it just by practicing its exercises daily or weekly, regularly. It's a quick app that you can tap into and learn a new technique every day. Now you can just、uh, type. You can just go to.、Um, Apple Store or the Play Store of Android or iOS device. Just type in S A M Sam, and you'll most likely find it in the top ten results. The full name is Self Help Anxiety Management, and here is the logo of the Sam app. So when you tap into the Sam app first, you see this logo, which says it's designed by the University of England. The University of the West of England is a team of psychologists, so you can be assured that the exercises in this app and the materials that you can read on this app is compiled from many psychological theories, research, and is well structured. Now, when you tap into this app, first of all, you know. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight sections in this app which you can tap into. And the first one that, and there's a little settings tab here, which we'll go through.、Um, it's more like the technical stuff, the legal stuff we'll tap into later. The first section that I want you to take notice of is this one. The work with Sam, working with Sam app, the, the working with Sam sections. Now here you see so many different things in this app. So many materials. It's just very short readings. So when you, when you're traveling, when you're commuting, you can just look at it on the bus, on a train. It's very convenient. So what's this for? It says use Sam to observe how anxiety affects you over time. Learn how thinking and lifestyle can contribute to anxiety. Identify situations where you want to reduce anxiety, and practice self-help options for managing anxiety. Introduce you to Social Cloud, which is one of the features, a very cool feature of this Sam app, which we'll look into later. Also give you information about、uh, some crisis helplines in the UK. So you can see in the UK and Ireland, there's a telephone number, an email address,、um, a, the Samaritans community that works 24 hours a day, giving you non-judgmental emotional support. And there are also other valuable pages that you can look into, like. Um, students Against Oppression, Self Harm, and Suicide pages. You can get support there and see more information. Not just in the UK, but in the US as well. There's National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. There's the Referral Helpline. There's also the National Eating Disorder Association contact details. And、I、also give you some related websites like. For substance abuse or mental health issues, worldwide a list of suicide prevention hotlines can be found at Befrienders International Association 
for suicide prevention. And there are also alternative sources of support, so it just advises you to go to a medical doctor, a physician, or other health advisor, counselor, psychotherapist to talk to, to look for friends and family support whom you can trust. So it gives you all kinds of sources of support that you can help yourself with apart from this app. So this what is for. Okay. The next one is what Freud said. Let's see. Freud wrote that the aim of psychological therapy is to transform neurotic misery into common unhappiness. So don't expect to become completely free of anxiety with or without this app. Aim for improvement in how you manage your anxieties in daily life. It gives you a rationale of this app and a important belief that you don't expect overnight success. You don't expect overnight transformation of your life just by doing a single exercise of this app. You have to practice the, the, the exercise in this app regularly and you expect improvement but not overnight success. You expect yourself to learn a new technique regularly to see improvements in your life gradually but not overnight success. So the next section is time and practice. So that's what I say also. Take time to think about and to practice the self-help options. It gives you some scientific evidence. A recent study found that on average, people took 66 days to establish a new habit. Some studies say 21 days, and that's why there are many psychological uh, books that tells people to go on a 21-day program. But according to this app, to the study mentioned in this app, it took on average 66 days to establish a new habit. I appreciate small improvements in how you manage your anxiety. So it talks about the importance of time and practice. Using your anxiety profile, study your anxiety tracker and ask yourself. We'll talk more about this feature of the anxiety tracker. But just go through all these materials. On which of the four anxiety factors do I score high and low? What is my usual range of scores for each anxiety factor? Which anxiety factors concern me most? What methods do I already use for managing anxiety? Think about your answers when trying out the self-help options. So you need to have this awareness when you when you're using this app. You need to ask yourself this question. You need to monitor your anxiety level. Every time when you practice a technique, a emotion management technique, or else you can't see your improvement. You can't observe your, your own improvements without tracking it. So it gives you an example. When he's anxious, Joe suffers unpleasant physical sensations such as shaking and breathlessness. Recording a high score on his anxiety tracker, he's practicing methods of physical relaxation to reduce these sensations. Another example... Kim's anxiety tracker shows a high score for her worrying thoughts about particular events or situations. She's studying the information on thinking, anxiety, and trying out methods of mental relaxation. Both Joe and Kim are aiming to reduce their anxiety to a level that they can tolerate and that does not interfere with their daily life. So you see, different people will use different strategies, different approaches to manage their emotions. There's no right or wrong. It's just... The matter of time that you find out which technique suits you and which technique helps you grow and helps you manage your emotions better. Next, things that make me anxious is another feature in this app. Use this list with a calendar to recognize situations that you can manage. Identify anxious situations to prepare for. Set reminders, a time reminder to practice anxiety management skills. Set reminders to take a break. So this is important as well. Not just practice, but you need to take a break and do something you enjoy. Next part, are you a thinker or a doer? Sometimes it's helpful to have clear tasks and be more action-oriented. And sometimes it's helpful to explore ideas and be more reflective. So it tells you that the SAM app provides a mix of action and reflection options. The reflection options gives you information to think about 
and increase your understanding of anxiety. So there are some parts that need you to reflect on your anxiety pattern, on how you perceive this topic of anxiety and other related stuff. And there are also action options, action exercises that gives you suggestions for activities or exercises to help you really learn and practice the manage how to manage anxiety. So whether you are a thinker or a doer is just on a spectrum, is on a continuum. If you are more like a thinker, then you may find it more comfortable when reading. The materials, and but you need to come out of your comfort zone to really practice it. You know your weaknesses, you know your strengths. Then you need to come out of your comfort zone and start jumping into those so-called risky areas to improve yourself. How hard can it be? So each self-help option has a learning level of one, two, or three. Like this little exercise called symptoms of anxiety. Uh, the purple circle tells you that is a reflection exercise, and the level of difficulty is level one. Most people find it easier to start with level one options, and then progress to levels two and three. Your self-help preferences may come from all three levels. So we'll go into these exercises, and you'll see how you can choose the exercises that fit yourself, that fit your stage. So Sam app in summary is to help you review your anxiety profile, list what makes you anxious, try out the self help options, share self help tips in a social cloud, which is another great feature in this app. See what works for you, build your personal anxiety management toolkit, practice, practice, practice. Remember, always remember practice, practice, pra- practice, because practice makes perfect. And as soon as you practice, your emotion management skills will be so much better. Okay, so this part is working with Sam. I really highly recommend that you first go through this part, this section first, before you go into the other subsections, before you go into any of the exercises, because it gives you an awareness. It gives you a big picture of what this app is about. So next one, the next section that you can tap into is let's see how's my anxiety right now. This orange little emoji, how's my anxiety right now? So this app is really cool. You can tap and tap on to cloud. It gives you much more information. Or just not tap, but you slide it upwards like this. <coughs> You can view a record of your anxiety levels via this anxiety tracker. Once you have saved them, you can profile your anxiety up to five times a day. But we suggest you do so no more than once a day. So I guess maybe if you record record your anxiety levels so many times, then it would just make you、um, more nervous, maybe. And besides the cloud part, you can tap onto the. Information circle. It tells you basically the feelings. What what are these? What what does this mean? Feelings of anxiety and tension, worrying thoughts, unpleasant physical sensations, avoiding things I fear. You want to know what does it mean? Feelings of anxiety and tension. For example, you feel you're feeling stressed out. You feel nervous, worried. What are worrying thoughts? Give you some examples. I don't know what to do. It'll go wrong. They don't like me. Unpleasant physical sensations. For example, you experience sweating, shaking, feeling sick all day. Or if a particular situation comes up, then you start to sweat. You start to feel sick. Those kind of things. Avoiding things that I fear. And it includes people, places, events, or thoughts. So after I know what this is about, for example,、uh, today I want to know feelings, of anxiety, and tension. What is the level of my feelings of anxiety and tension? Do I feel it? Do I feel it like most of the time? Does it? Is it intense? Stress out, nervous. I'm a little bit of nervous when I'm recording this. So maybe you can just, just you. It's a little bit of nervous. 
so you just slide a spot to where you want to be that reflect your situation right now. Worrying thoughts? Do I have many worrying thoughts? A bit. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know if it will go wrong. Some people may not like me. <laughs> yeah, probably. Unpleasant physical sensations. Am I shaking? Not really. Do I feel really sick? Not really. Or maybe you feel tired or you feel painful. I, I don't think I have these feelings. So we just... Avoiding things that I fear. Like what? Like people. To avoid people, places, events, thoughts. Mm, not really. But if you feel you, you really... Like you're very anxious about, for example, a particular place. For example, you you feel very anxious when you just go to a particular place. Then maybe you got intense fear, so you record it like this. Just an example. So after you have recorded your different dimensions of anxiety, just tap this little save button here on the right hand corner. Tap save and it's automatically saved. So let's tap the arrow button to go back. And now, so the orange, this orange button helps my anxiety right now is a place for you to track your anxiety level whenever and wherever you are. Every time you want to record that, you tap into this orange button. Now we'll go into another section that's called this one down here called anxiety tracker this red button anxiety tracker so it's a place for you to track your anxiety levels study the patterns in your anxiety now it's a place to show your anxiety level that you have recorded before in that section I mentioned before what you record in the in, in the subsection that I mentioned before will automatically goes into this section called the anxiety tracker it shows your anxiety level graphically and it's an important feature because monitoring the anxiety level is the first step for you to manage your anxiety you have to know about your pattern you have to know about you have to gain this awareness of your anxiety levels of how anxious you are at different stages at different areas of, in different areas of your life so let's see um, it's getting really detailed and it shows the date and the time as well. Anxiety, tension, this one category, worrying thoughts, another category, physical sensations, another category, and the last one is avoiding things. So you tap into this settings button and you see you can show the feelings of anxiety and tension or, or if you just want to know um, how how your worrying thoughts are actually affecting you on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. So you just untick the others. You just untick the others. And you know, want to know according to hours, then you tap hours. If you want to see that um, how your worrying thoughts affects you, then you tap in days, then you tap in days. So you see, if you tap in days, then it will just show the dates of each month. You tap on weeks, then it shows according to a weekly basis, on a weekly basis. If you tap into months, then it just shows July, August, September, October, November, and December. And I don't know why it's just 2016. Maybe there's a place. It's just 2016. I don't know if there is a place for you to manage the time and date. But it is just how it works. It's just how the anxiety tracker works. 
Regardless of the date, and regardless of the um, date, you can see your pattern. Is it going upwards or is it going downwards? You will know your own pattern on a weekly basis. Okay. So the next part that I want to explore is called things that make me anxious. Things. Sorry about that. Things that make me nervous. This green button. So, just tap. You just follow the instructions. Every time when you feel uh, you're confused about uh, or you want to know about this feature more, just tap the I. Just tap. Just slide the cloud out, or just tap into the information button. So it says, use this feature to list the people, places, events, and thoughts that you associate with feelings of anxiety and tension. So, for example, you just. This is a thing that I've written the past few months, I guess. Every time when you want to add your anxiety, just tap, and then you write. For example, it's um, health. I'm I'm writing some broad category here, but if you engage in this exercise, you should really write what your particular anxiety is. For example, you you're feeling very sick every day. You feel sick. All right. So, if you wrote it, then feelings of anxiety. How anxious are you? How tense are you? Are you stressed out? Are you very nervous of this of your own health? If it is, the record. Then you record your anxiety level. Worrying thoughts. Do you have many worrying thoughts regarding your health? Unpleasant physical sensations. I mean, you feel sick, so yeah, probably. Avoiding things that I fear. For example, I feel very sick. I don't want to go into places that are crowded with a lot of people. This just make me feel very uncomfortable. So you avoid. Places that you fear, and after that, just click save. And when you want to edit it, just just tap edit. Note: you can write a more detailed note of it. For example, um, which parts, which body parts do you feel sick, or are you just feeling tired generally, or feel sick generally? So you can write it and save it. You can also set a reminder. You can also set a reminder. For example, um, it's 2017, and it's the 30th of April. You can set a reminder. For example, um, tomorrow. Set the reminder. Then um, your phone will ring at 5:47 on the first of May 2017 to remind you that you are anxious about it. And why do I need to do that? Because after you learn the emotion management, anxiety management exercises to calm yourself of your worrying thoughts. Regarding health or regarding a situation that you feel sick, then you can practice at this particular time. You can practice the emotion management skills that you learn from this app, and you see improvements along this way. It's a really cool feature. You just click save, and then it's done. Okay. The next one that I want to talk about is this pink button. This pink section called "Help for Anxiety Now." If you really feel 
your very end just now, and there's just nobody to help, and you just want a quiet place for yourself, and you want to help yourself out, just go into this app and tap Help for Anxiety Now. I give you instructions. Let's go through this together. Read this twice slowly. It says, "Panic is an intense form of anxiety, which is a normal response to stress, rightly or wrongly. My brain senses a threat to my health and well-being. These panicky feelings are comfortable, but they will gradually subside." So again, read this again. Panic is an intense form of anxiety, which is a normal response to stress, rightly or wrongly. I bring sense of threat to my health and well-being. These panicky feelings are uncomfortable, but they will gradually subside. And there are three exercises to help you remove these panicky feelings off you. The first one, you can see there are different levels, and it's all green circles. That reminds you it's an action-based exercise. It's not just reading. It's not just reflecting. You need to take action. And we can start with level one. It's called calm breathing. So what is that? So remember, every time when you want to know about what this exercise is about, just lie the cloud out. If at any time you feel uncomfortable, stop and wait until the feeling clears. You may need to breathe slower and deeper. If uncomfortable feelings persist, you may wish to consult your doctor. You press the I button, information button. It tells you very clearly what you have to do. Tap or drag the set breathing time, optional, and then tap once to start the timer. And a third step is to breathe in with a while the dough is purple, then breathe out. So let's go back. Calm breathing. So it's optional, but I'll show you how it's done. Just so you can adjust this purple area if you you want more time to breathe in, then just slide it. Just drag it to like six seconds. You want less time to breathe out four seconds. Then just stays here. And then after you have adjust your timer, just press this green tree, this green circle. I mean, just tap it. Okay, it's purple. You breathe in. And when, when it turns green, then you breathe out. So you need to practice this exercise. It gives you a visual aid, a visual aid to help you to guide your breathing exercises. And then the next one is called picture piece. So what is it? And it, and you see, there's a five minute practice. So when you are engaging in this calm breathing exercise, at least you have to take five minutes to engage in this breathing exercise in order to calm yourself out. It's not one minute. It doesn't work, and you just quit. It's not like that. You have to at least engage in this exercise for at least five minutes to see or to to see how you improve. And to see how you have adjust, how you can adjust your breathing lap, your breathing rhythm. The next part is called picture piece. So it takes, let's see, it takes one to five minutes, and it's a level one exercise. It's pretty easy. Find a quiet place to practice this. Okay. Information button. Choose one of those peaceful images. Rub it to make it appear. Allow your eyes to move over the image. Attend to the detail of the image, not to what you're thinking. Combine with the breathing exercise. So all you care about in this exercise is just you engage in the breathe-in, breathe-out process, and you give your attention to the picture, just to the picture, not to what you're thinking or worrying about. So let's see which picture you like. For example, you like flower. So what should to do, I think it's the name of the picture, right? Marigold, yeah. This flower's got marigold. Just tap into the picture, and then you just rub the surface, rub the screen slowly. See the details of the flower. 
the water drops on this flower, see how the color of this flower is like, how sharp it is, how colorful that is. Rub it very gradually. Focus on your breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in for four seconds. Look at the flower, look at the color of it. Look how beautiful it is. And then breathe out. Until you finish the exercises. Don't rush. Don't rush to this. Don't rush to rub your screen. Take it slowly at a time until you finish this picture. Observe how beautiful this picture is. Okay. So this is how this exercise help your mind refocus and to relax your mind, relax your whole body, and refoc and refocus on different. Parts. Besides, up, up, I mean, to refocus on different areas of your life rather than your worrying thoughts. Refocus on the reality. Refocus on the present moment. Okay, picture piece. And then there's a level two exercise called change the focus. It takes one to five minutes. Let's see what that is. Change the focus. You can learn to shift your attention away from anxious thoughts or sensations onto other thoughts or objects. Focus first on your breath as it enters and leaves your body. Now find and focus on a sound nearby. One by one, shift your attention to other sounds around you, and then further away. Combine with a breathing exercise. So it always is refocus and breathing exercises. Can be done almost anywhere at any time. So it combines the breathing exercise and a refocus exercise that you can. But it asks you to focus not on a picture, not on an image, but on a sound instead. So you're using different senses, not just the eye. You're using your ears. Using a different sense to help you refocus on other things other than worrying thoughts. So this help for anxiety now section to help you ease your emotions, to manage your emotions, to make it less intense at least for now. And the next big part that I want to talk about is called a self help with Sam section. This little. Question mark button, and when you tap into it, you can see there are six subsections, and every one is very unique. There are information about anxiety, thinking, and anxiety, relaxation physical, relaxation mental, health and anxiety. Take small steps, and let's go into every one of them now. Information about anxiety. So it takes one minute. It's all reflection exercise. All purple circle. What what is anxiety? So take the time to read this material. It's just a one minute reading material. Remind yourself of these facts from time to time. Swap experiences of anxiety with other people. I'm not going to read it to you. You should take your time to read the reading materials about anxiety to find out more about what is anxiety and how we can manage it yourself. Next one: symptoms of anxiety. It's more in depth. It takes two minutes. So let's see. It is advisable to consult your doctor if physical or other symptoms are intense, painful, or persistent. Also, give you some. Medical advice or medical suggestions. Let's see. Let's symptoms of anxiety. So、no, you can zoom in and zoom out. It's a little bit too small. Feelings and anxious. When you feel anxious, nervous, stressed, tense, worried, or panicky, then it's a symptom of anxiety. Anxiety involves body, mind, 
feelings, thoughts, physiology, behavior, and thoughts includes negative thoughts, worries, worrying images, anxiety, dreams. There are many symptoms of anxiety. Here are some examples: behavior, avoiding things, avoiding places that you fear, irritability, putting things off, or like procrastinating. Unhealthy habits. Everyone has their own set of anxiety symptoms. Use the anxiety profile to learn about yours. Physiology: blushing, sweating, fatigue, breathlessness, trembling, and nausea. So, if you feel, if you experience this physically, behaviorally, or thinking patterns like that, then it's a sign that it's a, there are symptoms of anxiety. You need to be alert to that. Level two exercise, which takes five minute, a psych of anxiety. I'm alert to any. See, think about how this example matches your own experience. Okay, I'm alert to any situation that I've learned maybe difficult or unpleasant. So you need to ask yourself: Do you have this cycle of anxiety? I avoid a situation, drink, make an excuse, etc. I feel tense and anxious. I think I can't cope with it. I think it will be awful. The quality of life and confidence are reduced. You need to be alert if you have this cycle of anxiety because. Anxiety works in a cycle. Your thoughts will influence your actions, and your actions, for example, if you avoid certain things, then it would just make your fear grow, and it would just make you feel more worried and more anxious. You need to take take note of that. Okay, you are biased. A level three exercise, which takes five minutes. Let's see what that is. Your bias introducing the idea that we don't always think straight. Anxiety is a fast response because it is a survival response, and our past experience with what taught us to fear some things more than others. But our present anxiety is not always proportionate to the size of the threat. Research clearly shows that for some anxieties, we tend to overestimate the probability of something unpleasant happening. Overestimate its unpleasant impact. Underestimate our ability to cope with it. Notice how and when this appears to be true of other people. Think about how and when this might be true for you. So basically, it talks about the bias attention and the bias interpretation you have towards things that you feel anxious. You, you need to have this awareness because when you're biased. Most likely, you feel that your anxiety is real, but the reality is that most of the time we overestimate the probability of something unpleasant happening, or even worse, we catastrophize it. We tend to overestimate its unpleasant impact, and we tend to underestimate our ability and our resilience to cope with such events. These findings can be difficult to accept. And it is important to keep an open mind. So all this information will sort of rewire your brain to start to integrate this belief, this unbiased belief of anxiety, instead of just worrying all day and thinking that all your thoughts, all your worries are true. This is very important. So is all the information about anxiety. The next one is called. Thinking and anxiety. So all these exercises is actually about knowing your thinking pattern. Let's see, a one minute. So they have one, two, three, four, four reflection exercises and two action-based exercises. Let's go into one of them. How do you think? How we think influences how we feel and behave. Again, it works in a cycle. We、we'll、learn to think in particular ways. Some ways are more likely to make us anxious. 
try and distinguish between your thoughts and your feelings. Okay. You should worry half hour to practice this. See relaxation mental on the self help menu. So it leads you to another exercise, which I think you can just take note of before you go through、uh, the other exercises. And we'll talk about the worry half hour also later. Examples of anxious thinking. So there are different patterns of examples, different patterns of anxious thinking. Let's see. Try observing this in other people first, because it's like a mirror. When you see how others think, and you will be more observative when you're seeing others how they think. You will see it more clearly. Because most likely, when we're occupied by worrying thoughts, we can not perceive things clearly. Let's take a look at each of them. Think of the worst. Think of the worst scenario. The pain in my chest means there is something wrong with my heart. Predicting that the worst will happen. They don't like me. They think I'm stupid. Exaggerating negatives. I made a complete mess of it. It was an absolute disaster. Overgeneralizing it. Which is very common. If something happens once, you think it will always happen. For example, if you feel anxious in the supermarket, thinking I'm always anxious when I go out. All or nothing, black and white thinking. Unless I do it with no mistakes at all, I have failed. Another very common thinking pattern: imagining that you know what other people are thinking. I can tell they are thinking what a fool I am, which may not be the case. They may think that they may think the opposite. They may think that you're really smart. It's just that you do things differently. Okay. The next one is question your thoughts. You see, level two exercises. Take an Andrew's thought and ask yourself, how do I know it's true? How can I prove it? Would my friends agree with me? Is there a more helpful way for you to think about the situation? It's like questioning your thoughts. Is it real? Is it true? Is it really true when you think logically? What others think, what I'm thinking is true. And what are alternative ways to think about that situation or think about that worrying thought? There are no right or wrong answers. Some thoughts are more helpful than others. It's just that the more alternative, more alternative thinking pattern you can have about a situation. An alternative explanation. The more you have, then the more you can think clearly about what is true, or maybe true about this situation.、It、gives you more choices. Positive positivity practice. So let's see what that is. Use this as practice for creating positive thoughts. Enter four positive and then. Four negative thoughts related to your anxiety and situations. As your thoughts are randomly presented, tap on the positive thoughts to get a star. So you can add your thoughts. For example, add your negative thought.、Um, for example, I am stupid. For this example, I just enter one. Okay. I'm stupid. Press OK. Atro positive thoughts. I do things differently. Okay. It's a positive thought. And creatively. Okay. Creative. Wait. Okay. Okay. So press okay. And then you see this screen. The little bubbles will appear. Because I just entered one thought, so actually this bubble should have one thought because. If I have entered four thoughts, then these bubbles will be filled with words. But I just entered one positive thought and one negative thought, so I think 
it will appear in the fourth bubble. Come it up. Yep, yeah, I'm right. I am stupid. Let's see the instructions. As your thoughts are randomly presented, tap on the positive thoughts to get a star. So we see I'm stupid. Don't press it. Although you may really think that you are stupid and you really want to press it, don't press it because it's a negative thought. Okay. So here comes the positive thoughts. I think after this round, it would just the words in the bubbles will appear randomly. Okay, here comes our positive thought. Differently, I think there's a mistake here, but I know that I do things differently and creatively. So let's see if we get a star. Yeah, it's a positive thought. So th this whole exercise should take. That should take one to five minutes. You just act as a reinforcing mechanism. It reinforce you when you press the positive thought, then you get a star. So you start to think that you start to rewire your brain that oh, a positive thought will give me some reward. It's healthy. It's a healthy thought pattern. It's a healthy thought. Then gradually you will re rewire your brain to think positively. It will rewire your whole thought pattern. And there's another exercise, action based, called the focusing illusion. Nothing in life is as important as you think it is when you are thinking about it. This observation, supported by research, suggests that anxiety will have less impact if we learn to pay less attention to our anxious thoughts and feelings. So it's all about shifting our attention. It's about refocusing. Check this out against your own experience in a range of situations. Check this out against your own experiences. So, this action-based exercise asks you to observe how you shift your attention from your anxious thoughts and feelings to other things. And if you start engaging in other things, if you start another activity instead of thinking and worrying all day, then the activity that you're engaging in will start becoming more important, and you're shifting your focus, your attention to that. And that would just makes you feel less tense, and your worrying thoughts would start to gradually subside. It's all about taking action. And there's a level to exercise called change the focus. So I think it's the same. It's using your senses to refocus on a different aspect of the reality. Shift your attention to other sounds around you, and then further away, and combine with the breathing exercise, which we have gone through these exercises just before in another subsection. Okay, so that's thinking and anxiety is about your thought pattern. The next one is called relaxation physical. So you can see calm breathing. We have touched upon this feature already. Tense and relax exercises, muscle relaxation, ground yourself one, ground yourself two. Tense and relax exercises. If at any time it feels painful, stop and wait until the feeling clears. You may be tensing too hard or have a minor injury. If the pain continues, consult your doctor. Sit or lie comfortably without crossing your limbs, starting with your toes and moving up your body. Focus on each muscle in turn. Gently tense the muscle and hold the tension for five seconds. Then relax it for ten seconds. Repeat twice daily. The green timer button will help you with timing the tense muscle and hold and relax muscle face faces. So this tense and relax exercise is about tensing your muscles and relaxing your muscles. It's another refocusing exercises. So you just tap the green bar. 
So when this green purple, I mean when this, so when this purple bar is going on, you just tense your muscles. When it turns green, then you relax your muscles. It's that easy. Again, this exercise takes 10 minutes. So you need to practice it regularly and for at least 10 minutes. But of course, if you tense your muscles and you feel really painful about it, you should stop it and consult your doctor. Muscle relaxation. Wherever you go, whatever you're doing, you can scan your body for areas of muscle tension. Check first that you're not sitting or standing in a position that causes tension. When you notice an area of tension, use the tense and relax technique. Notice if some areas tense up more easily and need more attention than others. Get in the habit of doing this a few times a day. One of five minutes. So it's just a muscle relaxation exercise and a muscle scan. You first scan the area of tension, just observe in a really quiet place which body parts of you are feeling really tense or painful and then use the tense and relax technique that we have talked about just a moment ago. Next one, ground yourself 5 to 10 minutes. 5 to 10 minutes. Anxiety can be an intense experience where you feel detached from reality. Learn to ground yourself in the present. Focus on the present, in your body, in it, in images of calm. Here are some examples from which you can develop your own approach. Number one, breathing and focusing exercises as shown on this app. Number two, touch the physical objects around you and feel their solidity. Do a bit of tidying up if you feel like it. Walk with firm steps around your room or garden, pop the shop or something. Number four, talk to someone. Maybe tell them you're feeling a bit stressed. Share with people that you trust about your feelings, about your thoughts, about what you're worrying about all this time. Remind yourself that high levels of natural hormones, part of your body's anxiety response, are causing these effects. So it's not just about thoughts. It's about the biochemical aspect of your body that alters your thought patterns altering your body sensations which we will put that into a physical sensations category in the anxiety tracker section ground yourself number two it takes one of five minutes and as a level three is a level three exercise take a few minutes to think about a place and time when you felt relaxed kind of like a self-hypnosis process. Give that memory a name and create a hand or finger movement, for example, a wave or a twist to remind you of it. Use your name and the movement to recall the calming memory when you need it. It's really like a self-hypnosis technique. Practice this a few times to establish the connection. It means the connection between your finger movement that you have invented and the place or time when you felt relaxed. The imagined place and time that you felt relaxed is this connection. So this is relaxation physical, using your bodily sensations to connect with your calmer self. Next one, relaxation mental. The worry half hour, it takes 30 minutes. It's a level one exercise and there's a picture piece that we have the rubbing the screen off and seeing the image, refocusing on the image, on the details of the image. That that exercise that we've gone through is only a thought, a worry shared, a simple meditation, stopped at thought. So let's go through this. The worry have hour. Rather than let worries take over, practice this activity, take more control of them. Every day at a set time, take 30 minutes to work on your worries. Write down everything that is worrying you and what you think you can do about it. Have a good worry and then leave it all till the same time tomorrow. So every day, so it requires practice for a couple of weeks to be useful. Again, it takes time and practice. So every day, you just set a regular time slot of 30 minutes 
just to work on your worries. And after this, after thirty minutes of this worrying time, you just stop all the worrying because you have allocated time to your worries, to think through your worries, to think about what you can do about it, to think about or just to think about how you can prepare or read materials on the particular. Subject, particular issue that you're worrying about, and after this section, after this worrying half hour, just because you've worked through it, so just stop all your worrying. This, this exercise gives you a chance to adjust how you allocate time to worry, just to set a particular time to worry about things, but not spread all your worrying thoughts across the whole day. That would be really painful. Piece we've gone through that is only a thought. Let's see. Requires regular practice to be useful again. Picture a thought as cars driving along a road or as boats sailing down a river. Picture yourself sitting on the edge of the road or on the riverbank, watching them pass by. Stay where you are and let your thoughts pass you by. Add your worrying thought here. So, for example, I worry that it takes forever to record. Okay, record. Okay, so this this exercise just requires you to type in. Couple of letters. Like it was only a thought.、Um, not enough time, for example. Not enough time to do what I like. To do to do it. Okay. So I have this worrying thought and just tap to float them away. Instructions: Stay where you are and let your thoughts pass you by. So, if there's a worrying thought, just don't tap it. Just let it flow away. I know you really would want to tap it because you're worried, worrying about it. But in this exercise, just let it flow away. Jenny comes by. You want to tap it, but don't let it flow away. And it was sort of rewire your brain to think that it's just normal to have these worrying thoughts. Just let it flow. Just observe it as a thought, and that's how it is. Okay, so a worry chair. Let's see what it is. It can be embarrassing to admit to anxiety. Yet talking is often a relief, and friends can offer advice and support. Who could you most easily talk to about your worries? Aim to share at least one of your worries with this person. Try sharing small concerns at first. So you don't need to talk to a person, talk to your friend about all your worries. You don't need to over them, overwhelm them, or overwhelm yourself. Just share some small concerns at first if you feel uncomfortable. Worrisher, yeah, is an action base because you need to talk to a friend or people, a person that you trust. A simple meditation, a level three exercise that takes twenty minutes. I would say if you are not accustomed to meditating, then you may take three minute or even one minute meditation at first, and you just gradually at increase the time to meditate regularly on a weekly basis. Let's、see a simple meditation. Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Sit or lie down and make yourself comfortable. Allow your breathing. Again, refocusing and focusing on your breathing rhythm. To get into a steady rhythm, then close your eyes. Pay attention to your breath as it enters and leaves your body. Allow your thoughts and sensations to come and go. 
stay focused on your breathing. Quiet private surroundings are essential. You can find all kinds of meditation or mindfulness exercises on YouTube. So it's very easy. Stop that thought. Level three. It takes only one minute. Tap here to add to your worry. Then tap to explode it. We all talk to ourselves, and we can influence what our inner voice says. Focus on a thought passing through your mind. Using your inner voice, say stop to that thought. So I think it's like thought stopping technique. You can back it up by stamping your foot, or by snapping a rubber band on your wrist, distracting yourself, or focusing on another area of your of the reality. Practice this technique to stop your worrying thoughts. Experiment with your own methods. Let's try this out. Tap here to add a worry. Again. Not. No. Not enough time to do it. Okay. So if you're ready, just just tap enter, and then not enough time. Just tap into your worrying thought, and it will explode. That's how it is. It's pretty interesting. Health and anxiety is another part. Make anxiety worse. Try doing less of the above. So there's a slideshow telling you that what makes anxiety worse: take stimulant drugs, be late, smoke, don't take breaks, drink a lot of coffee, go without sleep, eat all kinds of junk food. Gives you. Additional information: anxiety and let's see. So don't work on all of these at once, but don't ignore them either. Swipe your fingers or write across the text to reveal more words of advice. It talks about the relationship between anxiety and alcohol, avoidance, brain power, exercise, kindness, relationship, time, sleep, work. Moderation in all things. It's the advice. Excessive drinking and alcohol withdrawal can make anxiety worse. So always remember moderation in all things. So you can read through it yourself about the relations between anxiety and avoidance, brain power, exercise, kindness, and so and so forth. Looking after me, so level three exercise. Do I have realistic expectations of myself? Do I try and see things in perspective? Can I be optimistic as well as pessimistic? Can I admit I'm wrong sometimes? Do I give myself a fair trial over mistakes? Can I be flexible? Do I share my worries with others? Do I look after myself physically and mentally? Have I got interests or activities that I enjoy? Do I take action as well as thinking about things? Am I grateful for the small things in life? Accept rather than criticize your answers. Use your answers to think about changes you could make. So it's more like a reflection exercise. Ask yourself whether you have taken good care of yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually, and then to see if you can make any changes, be it big or small changes. Whether you can make some improvements to transform your life, to transform yourself. Bit by bit, every day. So don't just skim through these these questions. You really have to think about each one, each question, very thoughtfully. Is a really deep question that you need to ask yourself. And when you observe your thoughts, when you observe how your mind and your heart answers it, then the answer will just come out. Mystical mirror,、uh, I mean mystical monitor. Twenty to thirty minutes, level three. Learn about yourself by listening to yourself. Will probably become more useful as you start to manage your anxiety. Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. 
using the audio recorder, talk about yourself and your life for ten minutes. Listen to the playback and think about what you've heard. Repeat steps two and three at least once. What have you learned? How can you use this in your life? So you can just tap the record button. Okay. Just stop recording after you played it, and then play it. And it won't save your audio files, your audio record. So you, if you really want to reflect on. Your improvements, how you improve along the way using this exercise and using this app, using this feature of mystical monitor, then you need to have、uh, maybe just record yourself in in the recording device on your phone, so you can always listen to it and see how you improve along this way. Okay, health anxiety. Finish this part. The last part. That in this section is called take small steps, the one with the footprints. So there are basics: get started, build confidence, get a slap, imagine, experiment. You can do a checklist. Seems a lot, but it's actually very easy. Let's go to see basics.、So、you need to see what this section is about. What this section of take small steps is about. The basics. Take lots of practice, and don't expect. Quick fix regarding your anxious、uh, situations and your anxiety. Get started. So it talks about a technique of how you can take small steps in order for you to condition yourself to a relaxed state rather than an anxious thought. Get started. Think of a situation that makes you slightly anxious and which happens fairly often. Record your level of anxiety from zero to a hundred before and after being in this situation. Repeat this exercise with other low anxiety situations. Build confidence. You now have a target list of low anxiety situations where you can try out self-help options for managing anxiety. When you feel more confident about these situations, try something that makes you a bit more nervous. So it works in a hierarchy, and so on with lots of practice. But don't rush to the next level till you're ready for it. Get a slap. As a young student, a famous psychologist was anxious about asking girls for a date. To overcome his anxiety, he resolved to ask a hundred girls for a date. He didn't get any dates. He did get a slap, but he got over his dating anxiety. It's not about the outcome; it's really about the process, about how you grow, about the changes in this process of transformation in yourself. Imagine it. Add this to your self-help options. Think of a situation that makes you moderately anxious. Spend a few minutes imagining it in detail: the colors, sounds, smells, the surroundings of it. Imagine being there and feeling calm. Imagine how you would look, move, and speak. Use a relaxation exercise if it helps. For example, a breathing or muscle tense and relaxed exercise. Practice this vis- visualization to prepare for the real thing. So you need to you need to visualize yourself, how you calm yourself down, or how you feel very peaceful and calm when you are supposed or you previously feel very anxious regarding that situation or regarding a particular person. You need to visualize it, just like some basketball players that visualize how they make shots. They make a lot of shots before they go into the game, and then their performance or their shooting percentage will just go up because they have visualized how they have made the shots previously before the game. Experiment following the guidance above. Try out the self-help options on Sam. On a Sam app and any others that you discover, find out which ones will work for you and practice them whenever you can. Read the reflections on information about anxiety and think in anxiety. Check out how they apply to your work on anxiety. You can do it. In a survey of people recovering from anxiety, they found it most use- useful to remind themselves that I'm not crazy and I will not go crazy. A problem is very common. Many people live with it, and I'm not alone. The power to heal myself is within me. I can do it. What would be helpful to say to yourself when you are learning to manage your anxiety? So maybe you can just 
when you feel like um, something is useful to managing your emotions, some quotes, some words that you can think of now, or or later just write it down on a paper, on a card, and then just remind yourself or read them out loud again when you feel you're not very comfortable or you're not very confident with this with all these uh, emotion management exercise then you'll start to gain your confidence back you need to stick to the reality that you can manage it you can fix it you can manage your emotions well checklist start with low anxiety situations study anxiety responses practice self-help skills progress to slightly more anxious situations when you're ready record anxiety levels before and after Explore what works best for you. Recognize your progress and improvements. And remember, go slowly. There is no overnight success. You need to practice with patience. You need to practice regularly until you see improvements, whether it's a big or small one. So, so all this part takes... And I actually want to share with you another feature. That's called my anxiety toolkit. Now my anxiety toolkit, there, are, there are no self-help tools added into it. So how do we add it? For example, self-help with Sam exercise. Um, for example, you find that the picture piece. This exercise is really useful for you to manage your emotions, to manage your anxiety. Tap into it. And just tap into the three bars, the settings bar here. And there are different options. You can rate it. You can give it a five star, four star, or any ratings that you like. You can go to social cloud and get add the toolkit. If you really like this exercise, just press add the toolkit. And you go back to my anxiety toolkit and now there it is so it's an easy shortcut for you you need you don't need to toggle between different interfaces and different subsections when you feel really anxious then you already feel really anxious so you won't be able to tap into okay the self-help with the sam app and then the relaxation mental or physical i don't know i forget makes you more worried Okay, it's in the relaxation mental, the picture piece. So it just makes this whole process more. It just makes this whole process easier for you to tap into the exercise that you need most at that time when you're really anxious. I think it's a really cool feature. If you like this exercise, question your thoughts. Again, tap into the settings bar and add the toolkit. And boom. When you feel nervous, and just the next time, just enter this section. My anxiety toolkit. And you practice this exercise. It's that easy. Okay, so we've, uh, we have gone through almost all the exercises in this app. I want to show you the social cloud thing. The social cloud thing, this purple button here. So all you need is just to register. If you register, then you just enter a username and password. And if you don't, just register it. Submit. Then there are some advisory conditions of use. Just go through it. And then you agree. Okay. So congratulations, I've come to the social cloud. So after you enter this social cloud thing section, if you have concerns about, you, you first read the instructions. If you have concerns about the physical and mental well-being of another user 
On a social cloud, you may advise them to contact their medical advisor or other health professionals. So you can see, there are all kinds, kinds of comments. It's like an archive of what people are anxious about. For example. These exercises. Okay, so for example, this a simple meditation. You can give comments to. You can give comments regarding this exercise. It's called a simple meditation. You can see, people rate it, give it a ratings of four, and there are different users saying about talking about their experiences. I'm not gonna read them. You can just read through them, learn from others' experience, and support each other by tapping by by tapping to add your comment here. You can see, tea really helps me calm me down. Tea really helps calm me down. So you can see different techniques and different approaches, different managing emotions strategies that people use that you may find useful too. So there's a community of people that gives you support regarding your anxiety and regarding how you manage your emotions. Read through it. Find anything helpful in here. I think it's a great feature. Okay, so it's almost it's almost done with this video. Before before I go, I want to really show you there are some additional features, some additional helpful information about this app. It's like the first one, anxiety links. For information and guidance about common mental health concerns of finding therapists, you can tap into each of the link. It, it leads you to the Anxiety UK website, British Association for Counseling and Psychotherapy, the website of that called Mind Royal College of Psychiatrists, NHS DIY Therapy Triumph Over Phobia. Just tap into it, and it will lead you to their website. Which you can find more information regarding. Anxiety and other related disorders. About Sam, you can see the development team, the people in this team designing this app. Acknowledgements and the Sam website. It will lead you to the Sam website, based in UK. So you see, you can download it, download in the App Store for iOS device and on Google Play on Android device. So the social cloud feature will enable you to share your experiences with Sam community while protecting your identity. And terms and conditions, of course. To read through it, and also the helpline, the crisis helplines that I mentioned previously in the UK, in the US, and alternative sources of support. My account, you can lock out. My account, you edit your account. You can change the username. You can choose the password, and then enter the current password. And you can also delete the account very easily if you feel like you don't want the social cloud、um, feature. You don't want to engage it. You don't want to engage in it any longer, or you can lock out. Okay, this is pretty much of this Sam app. I think is a great self-help app. It's pretty comprehensive. 
and user friendly, and it won't freak you out with a lot of materials to read before you feel overwhelmed with your worries. Give it a try and start practicing those tools as a, as a habit. Remember, no anxious thought will disappear overnight. There's no overnight success just because you do a single exercise. You have to train your brain to renew the thinking patterns, rewire it. Be patient always, and you'll be fine. If you want more information regarding psychology matters and regarding how you can manage your mental health, how you can increase your well-being, please go to ourhappymindtravel.com. That's O U R happymindtravel.com. You can find all kinds of information, sources, links, books, materials, videos. And all kinds of useful information, the show notes of the podcast of Happy Mind Travel. I hope you enjoy this topic today, and I hope this same app could help you build a positive and healthy pattern. Take it one day at a time, and enjoy to be happy, guys.